Hi, this is Reg Atwal, and welcome to my channel and another one of our show episodes for Family Business Q&A, where I'll be taking questions that come up from our clients and our community and answer them and give you a few tips. So one of the things that's come up recently is around shareholder responsibility and rights. Well, I should say responsibilities, okay? Not just one responsibility. So I'm going to list that very, very briefly with you, just communicate with you a couple of things to consider. When you've got shareholders uh, in a business, what are some of the responsibilities uh, that they must adhere to? What are some of the things that they need to be doing to contribute and add value to their business? Don't forget, you're going to end up with some shareholders that are active in the business and you'll end up with some shareholders that are passive. I'll come back to that towards the end. So going through my list here, one is definitely be knowledgeable about the company's operations. If you're an active shareholder, and you may have a role as a CEO, managing director, or any other role within the organization, or purely you're a board director, but you are actively involved. You don't show up every day, or you're involved in certain meetings every week. So first thing would be be knowledgeable about the company operations. Understand clearly what are the products, what are the services? Is there different locations involved? Who are the top managers within the organization? Have you had a chance to meet them and build a trusted relationship with them? How much do you know about the industry? What about the competition? Do you know who the top 10, 15, 20 competitors are? Have you had a chance to look at the, the SWOT analysis on those competitors? And measures of performance is also really important. You know, what are the three, four, five key things that are important to measure success? One of the tools that we use with our family business clients is the VIP toolkit. Vision, where are you going? Intentions, what must happen to get there? And the P in VIP stands for purpose, why are we doing it? And below that, we normally have anything from five to about nine strategic objectives, all on one sheet that we use to keep the board accountable. And I believe as a shareholder, you should be able to see something like that and measure success on a regular basis. Be also knowledgeable about the company finances and the ability to read an income statement and a balance sheet. You've got to know what's happening with profit and loss on a regular basis. You've got to know what the, I would add to that, what the cash flow uh, is looking like, the cash flow forecast for the next three months, six months, nine months, based on certain assumptions. And more importantly, what does the balance sheet look like? Other key areas, if you're a hardcore shareholder, you've put money into this business, is you may be looking at return on investment measurements, return on equity measurements as well. Attend shareholder meetings. Understand what will be the frequency of these meetings. Is it every two months, every three months, every four months? Are there different types of meetings throughout the year? Are there certain meetings that are linked to uh, performance and results for the end of the financial year? Are certain meetings linked to maybe strategic discussions for the next financial year? You've got to have that type of uh, details in your calendar and be very, very clear what types of meetings are taking place and, more importantly, attend them as a shareholder. Have knowledge of the other board members. Uh, maybe you're a passive shareholder, not actively involved and you've invested in a company. So make sure you have knowledge of all the board members. What are their qualifications? Uh, and if you're going to hire someone new, are you going to participate in the screening and assessment process of bringing that person into the organization? It's worth having that clarity as a shareholder, if you're going to have that responsibility or not. Also, the constructive questioning to the management. As a shareholder, you have a right to ask questions. Okay. Now, if you're a minority shareholder and you've agreed from the beginning that you're only going to turn up to so many meetings a year and get your monthly reports... Fair enough. Maybe you're going to send those questions to one key individual, maybe the chairman, maybe the CEO of the company, and they can come back to you. But if you're playing more of an active role, I would say you definitely should be asking constructive questions to the leadership and management team on a regular basis. Also give suggestions to management if there's anything appropriate going on, something um, that doesn't resonate with you but without getting involved in interfering with the management team or what they should be doing day to day. There's a difference between giving suggestions and opinions versus I'm a shareholder and I'm going to dictate to you what you should be doing. That may not go down too well. That could create politics maybe with other leadership team members, board members. So I would say be very, very careful how you do it, but focus on giving suggestions and opinions, leave it with them. 
Maybe also communicate with the acting CEO so they're aware that you gave some suggestions and leave it with them to now go and execute. And maybe at the next shareholders meeting, you can bring this up and ask them what happened with some of the suggestions I gave. Be positive, okay? It's just, so many times where I've facilitated family board meetings, business board meetings, and there's always one or two characters in the room that are just bashing everybody on the head, okay? Um, and coming across as very negative, very cynical about what's going on in the organization. I think it's really important if, if doing that in a boardroom is one thing, but if you're walking the corridors and you're meeting and greeting people in the organization, please you know, keep a positive mindset. You are the, the company's brand as well. You're a shareholder. You can inspire someone or you can end up depressing them very, very quickly with the words that you're using. Keep appropriate company information in strict confidence and recognize that you know other people may not be entitled to certain information, especially if you're a shareholder board member and you're sitting on many other boards. You may have investments in many other companies. Um, you may have a, a, a very big social following a, a big inner circle of people that you communicate with a regular basis. You could be part of a mastermind group where you share information. So just be sensitive that certain things are, are very confidential. And sometimes, you know, if things leak, it goes to a third party. It may end up coming back to the CEO or the leadership team. And that's not very, very nice. That how did that information leak out of the organization? Um, outside of that, I would say where possible and useful, um, also generate some business leads. Generate some contacts for the organization. Don't be just a, a passive shareholder. If you've got equity in the business, you want to get a return on equity, try connect the dots. Maybe there's somebody that you could be networking with, socializing with, mention the company, and say, like, I'll introduce you to the CEO of the organization. There's nothing better than shareholders generating good quality leads that can help the company grow. And where possible and useful, maybe develop some other relationships, especially if it's further financing or additional investment may be required for the organization. Other things I want to mention about shareholders have a right for the following information. One would be company strategy, important organizational changes. Make sure that you've got an agreement with the other shareholders, board members, that you can have this information. Basic financial status and reports, especially before it's released to the public, would be very, very important. Openness by the board and management to shareholder views on the above, things that I've already mentioned. And uh, there's an article that I've published on this, so reach out to me, uh, go to our website, check me out on LinkedIn, and I'll make sure I also give you the full article uh, off the back of this video. Ability to participate in the election of board members uh, who oversee the management of the company. This would be important. You've got access to and you've got a right to that type of information. Fair policies that protect their interests but also require their cooperation and risk-taking. That would be important. Uh, acceptable economic performance by the company including reasonable dividends and capital gains. So these are just a few things I wanted to leave you and hopefully I've left you with one or two. If you're one of these shareholders thinking, well, what do I have access to? I don't know what's going on in the company. Maybe I've inherited shares from one of the family members who's unfortunately passed away or, and I've suddenly I'm a shareholder in this company, but I have no idea what's going on. So again, listen to the words in this video, play it again maybe, make some notes, reach out to me on LinkedIn or Go to the description area where you'll find my details and I can share with you more information around uh, shareholder rights and responsibilities. And be very, very clear, you know, whether you're a passive investor or whether you're going to be active within the particular business, whether it's a family business or other investment opportunity. In which case, some of the things that I've mentioned to you, uh, you need to be receiving on a monthly basis. I, I highly recommend you get access to monthly dashboards. And in other cases, if you're very, very passive, you may not get all of that information. You'll wait for a formal shareholders a meeting, and after that, there'll be minutes and other information you'll have access to. And outside of that, um, there may be annual executive financial summaries that you'll be getting alongside, hopefully, your dividends, okay? So I hope that helps. Thanks very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. We've also got 10 other show themes on the channel, not just family business Q&A. So I hope you stick around and watch some of the other videos on our channel as well. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.